Hi, everyone, and welcome to a new episode of the Rectified Podcast. My guest today is Nina Smith from Free Period. The name says a lot about the nature of the product, but I'm going to let Nina tell us more about it in details. Nina, welcome to the podcast. Hi, Sandy, and thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure to be here today. Yes. So awesome. We recently uh, launched Free Period um, back in September. So Free Period is, uh, well, free rather, is a Danish word for liberated and freedom. And that kind of lies at the heart of what we're doing. We've launched a range of sustainable, ethically produced, chemical-free period underwear. Um, and a big part of our brand is really kind of embracing the fact that there's 1.8 billion of us around the globe that menstruate and wanting to normalize and even celebrate that and just make life that bit easier for all of us that have to endure a menstrual yes. cycle on a monthly basis. Yes. And Nina, um, tell us a little bit about the story of this product. Like, how did you create it? What did you do before? And how did you come to creating this product? Well, I, like with many ideas, it, it kind of uh, was born out of uh, necessity. Um, mm -hmm. I started reading about the impact on single-use period products on the environment um, when we were you know, spending a lot of time at home during lockdown. Um, and I was horrified to learn that close to 20 billion single-use period products end up on landfill each year from the U.S. alone. Um, and I knew yeah. I wanted to kind of help or, or contribute meaningfully to reducing that. So I started experimenting with trying different products at home. Some worked, some didn't work. But I ended up really enjoying using period underwear. Um, there's been a proliferation of new brands in that realm. And many of them are, are really, really good. True. Um, but then I had a couple of other ideas of things I thought I could maybe do differently. Um, so decided to give it a go. Mm -hmm. um, and did you do this same. alone or do you have people who are with you? I have a wonderful team of two excellent co-founders, um, which is excellent because I'm actually, the company is predominantly based in the US, though we ship globally. But since launching, yeah. I have moved to the other side of the world and now live in Australia. Um, and luckily, I've got two business partners who are based in the US and are managing this, that side of things there. So mm -hmm. it's a bit of a balancing act, but yeah, we make it work. Yeah, yeah. And are your products made in the US or elsewhere? They are. So for me, I've got a master's in human rights law. Um, and so for me, having an ethical um, and very transparent supply chain was really important. Uh, mm. So we actually have partnered with a factory in the US where we have personally visited them. I've lost count of how many times we've been there. So we know for a yeah. fact that all of the staff are very well looked after, work under, well, beyond fair conditions, they work under excellent conditions. Um, in terms of uh, the safety of the product as well, that was really important to us. Um, there have been a number of class action lawsuits against some other companies um, where PFAS, otherwise known as forever chemicals, mm -hmm. were found in their period underwear. Um, and I think yeah. by um, taking the production of the fabric as well onshore, it just gives you a bit more control and certainty over what chemicals the product is exposed to when it's made. So free period underwear made yeah. out of predominantly US grown organic cotton um, and entirely free of PFAS. So um, for me personally, that was important. I've suffered from um, an endocrine disorder called PCOS. Um, yeah. And so my hormones um, on their own are all over the place. And I didn't want to expose myself yeah. to more chemicals that can mess with them further. Mm -mm. This, is, this is really amazing. I think these are issues that a lot of women in the world suffer from, especially with like hormone disruptions and all of that. So I truly think that this is amazing. You mentioned human rights. Like, how did you go from there to here? Well, I actually um, have a career in law still as well. I, I, I currently do okay. as, you know, in addition to launching this company, business development for a law firm. So I still have the kind of legal angle to my background. Um, mm -hmm. And it's been interesting because I've never really been able to use my human rights yeah. um, degree. Uh, and, uh, you know, fast forward. I don't want to give my age away, but fast forward many years later and I feel that I'm kind of 
able to, you know, use some of that um, foundation I built early on mm. in in this new venture, which is, yeah, it's it's kind of a poetic yeah. way of going full circle. Yeah. What what skills from the past do you think that you can bring to your to the table in the world of entrepreneurship and you know product based businesses? I well, this is my first venture, um, okay. and we're very early days. Um, but what I'm mm -hmm. seeing already is that having the ability to pivot and being quite resilient when challenges mm -hmm. are thrown your way are yeah. um, <laughs> quite important traits to have. Um, you know. Throughout my career, I've been in quite fast-paced environments where you have to juggle multiple different projects with a lot of different conflicting priorities and stakeholders um, with, you know, maintaining your cool, being able to, to balance all of that. And I, I do find as an entrepreneur, that's something that's also really important. And I know we're only in our early yeah. days and that'll you know, continue to grow exponentially. Mm -hmm. So kind of leaning into the past experience I've had in that respect. Um, yeah. And yeah, I'm grateful for that. So it is interesting. I've been reflecting on it a lot recently, how, you know, you could have previous careers that maybe aren't related to what you're doing now, but a lot of those skills do transfer. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes looking back with hindsight, a lot of your past experiences make sense. True. That, that's so true. Like I experienced this in my life also. Like there are so many things that I've done in the past that brought me to where I am here and also that I use you know all the things that I learned from mostly failures or like talking to people experiencing other people's lives uh, or businesses or whatever like every single thing that we do we can take something from it and use it in the future in other in other spaces that are unrelated sometimes just like you were saying this yeah, is very so interesting um, Nina, who was your first client who's not family or friend? Oh, well, I don't actually think I should repeat their name. But <laughs> no, don't so, say the name. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> but we love them and we'll always cherish that person. <laughs> so, well, when we launched, we actually launched with um, a party is not the right word, but we had an event where we had a workshop. So, mm -hmm. a dear friend of ours who is a a uh, hormone nutrition coach held a mm. workshop and we had a big function where we talked about the phases of the menstrual cycle, how that impacts your well-being, how you feel your energy levels throughout the month. Uh, mm. And it was a really, really magical afternoon. And um, we were supported by a local cafe who allowed us to host it there. Um, so I would say our first sale from a non-family member or friend member came from that first day because there were people yeah. we don't know who attended then. And then mm -hmm. maybe it took about two weeks um, until we got our first non-family or friend order through online, which was also a very exciting moment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 always, yeah. I always love these stories and I always ask this question because that's, I think, the most, I don't know, as an entrepreneur, like the very first person who's like buying from you and taking a chance on you and they don't even know you. Like, why are you buying it from me, right? <laughs> It really is. And we've actually now, so we've been launched for uh, September, October, yeah, close to three months. And so we started having repeat customers come through now, which is a whole new level of excitement. So we've yeah, had customers yeah. that you know, bought uh, one or two pairs of free period underwear to try in September. And I've recently seen, we um, had some Black Friday sales and I've seen their names come through again. Yeah. And I thought, oh, that name looks familiar. And yeah, it's yeah, repeat yeah, yeah. customers. So that's, yes, yeah, such a Amazing. wonderful feeling. Amazing. I'm very curious, how long, like, how long do these things last? Like if I, if we buy something today, like two, three pairs for, you know, one month, um, how, mm -hmm. how often should I repurchase uh, the product? That really depends on how often you use them and also how well you take care of them in terms of um, mm. you know, making sure you wash them at a low temperature don't not drying them in yeah. the tumble dry and instead hanging them out to dry. Um, you mm -hmm. could expect them to last for at least two years, uh, but they should last longer with good care as well. Wow. Uh, it does come down yeah. to personal okay. preference, but yeah, they would they would definitely last two mm. years. So I did. A, I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, um, but I did a cost yeah. analysis, and um, it actually works out cheaper um, to use period underwear compared to 
single use products yeah. even up to after a year yeah of course um yeah so it's, it's yeah it's a good yeah, option uh, that's uh, yeah I'm, I'm just wondering about how many person how many people will come and repurchase maybe they'll just love the new yeah. designs or something <laughs> and they'll they yeah, will repurchase yeah. them <laughs> Uh, you mentioned events. Uh, you mentioned events and collaborating with the health uh-huh. coach. Um, th- is that how you spread the word first about your business? And are you still doing it? Yeah, that is how we first started, and it's an aspect we'd like to really continue with. Um, and this all started actually before we even launched the brand. So about mm-hmm. two months before we launched, I put a call out. Um, on social media and recruited a group of volunteers from all body shapes and all body yeah. sizes to do a, a sizing run so that we could make sure that, you know, from size extra small to triple XL, they all fit as they should do and are comfortable to wear. Also, because mm-hmm. we're bootstrapping the company, um, the funds yeah. are tight. So we've only been able to launch one shape of period underwear. Uh, mm. We chose a high-waisted full brief because we thought that was sort of the most universally flattering and comfortable yeah. shape, but we really wanted to try it before we launched. So we held this fitting session. I hired a venue in Houston um, and everyone got together. And it was meant to be this quick event where everyone came in, tried on their period underwear, got measured, and then you know, off they went. But every single person ended up staying behind um, after they were measured and we all sat in a circle and actually just started talking about our periods where they mm. shared stories of their first periods, what they were told, what they weren't told, you know, what <laughs> symptoms they've suffered with. And it yeah. ended up becoming this really like cathartic and uplifting yeah. um, talking circle. Um And there was, I don't know, it was a very magical moment in that mm. uh, you know, everyone left with this bounce in their step feeling really kind of uplifted and empowered to have been able to talk about something that so often is kept off the table and, and not really yes. openly discussed yet it affects so many of us mm-hmm. um and so I thought you know I really want to capture that is actually that there's something so magical about fostering that open and inclusive dialogue to you know enable us to have a better connection with our own bodies um and that's why we then decided to have a sort of workshop event around our launch um and since then you know be it at market stalls or you know another podcast it, it always I, i'm always the one in the corner of the room talking about periods to people yeah um, but it is something is, where you know sorry you carry on this is this is very interesting because it's things that we don't talk about like even no. us women no, between indeed. between us you know we never do uh mm-hmm. and The first days are very traumatizing when you're a teenager. Yes. Uh, yes. There's a lot happening there. Um, It's a major change and it's always like, you know, something that nobody talks about. And it's very interesting what you did, uh, linking the product to actual real stories. Um, In terms of, again, spreading the word and marketing, are you doing any other efforts than you know having real life events and doing all these sessions yeah at the moment um because we're on a bit of a shoestring we haven't invested heavily in a you know online marketing campaign yet um Mm -hmm. which is something we are going to look into doing in the new year but i guess that the luxury of um you know having to grow slowly uh, or more slowly than if you have extensive funds is that it gives us an opportunity to try different things and, and really finesse the back end of our operations um, in terms of our customer, customer fulfillment and supply chain before then um, yeah. taking the leap and going ahead with the marketing. Mm-hmm. So we're very much yeah. focused on slow organic growth at the moment. There's a lot of word of mouth um, yeah. marketing. I'm seeing a moment. lot of stuff yeah. on Instagram. You're, yes, you're active. Yes, <laughs> I follow you. Active there. Yes. Yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I always see. I always see what you're doing, and I yeah. think it's a. I think it's a good way also to like reach people organically. Um, do you mm-hmm. do that yourself, or do you have someone who's helping you? We do it ourselves. So um, mm-hmm. I've I really enjoy doing it. I find it fun, and um, I mean, for those of you that check out our Instagram, we kind of have a mixture yeah. of educational posts, some humorous posts. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Mm. So we we try to you know, keep the content really useful and relevant, um, and I do enjoy doing it. But honestly, it is probably something we'll have to outsource eventually because it is time consuming. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, at some the, point, for the time yes. being, I enjoy uh, yeah, doing but, it. Yeah. Yeah, it's always nice yeah. to have uh, one of the founders involved in the content creation process at the beginning. Because you understand your brand, you know what you want, you know what image you want to convey. But as you grow bigger, you can definitely, like, you know things better and you can explain things to other people. So if you're hiring someone, obviously you will be able to afford it. You'll be able to also tell them about, you know, what your brand is all about so that they're able yeah. to do the same thing for you. Hmm. Um, yeah, you, you mentioned bootstrapping. So it was mm -hmm. you and two other co-founders. Did you put your yep. own funds in the company? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So far, All right. So, yeah. All right. And are you planning on like getting more financing in the future or like angel investors or something? Or you you didn't think about that yeah, yet? Yeah, that's definitely, no, that's definitely on the horizon. Uh, and yeah, for the first half of the year, that's uh, well, next year. That is a, a big yeah. focus for us. We'd really like to, yeah secure some funding mm. so we can scale um the the idea was always to launch first uh develop proof of concept and yeah. get a good base of uh you know customer feedback um so there is something you no know, so we're able to put forward a you know, valuable proposal to potential investors so um yeah i think we're getting to that point and early in the new year that's something we're really going to look into mm. so that we can properly scale yeah I keep right. telling myself I That's... mustn't run before I can walk. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, no, this is pretty amazing. It's always good to, you know, get your product market fit, make sure that everybody wants your product. And then um, once you're selling enough, you know, you can go to the investor or the bank or whatever and show them some numbers because coming mm -hmm. out of the blue is more difficult uh, to get some funds uh, for that. Did you have any failed attempts or money wasted? I know we all do that. Uh, even after 10 years, sometimes of being in a business, we have failed attempts yes. and we lose money. But in this short period of time, did you have anything like that happen to you? Um, I'm trying to think. There will have been. Um, I ordered some packaging early on that I thought would be mm -hmm. suitable for our product. Um, and it just wasn't. <laughs> um, and it was a more expensive option as well. So that was a bit of a waste. Luckily, I didn't go ahead with a full order for our you know, full yeah. production run. But mm -hmm. that was a, you know, I sometimes, um, and I think that is a balance as an entrepreneur. Um, I personally have propensity to get bogged down with perfectionism. So maybe don't, you know, run ahead and take big risks mm. that quickly. Or, but... <laughs> Um, that is yeah. also a good trait to be able to do because I think you can end up sort of stifling yourself if you do try and do everything really perfectly. Sometimes you have to just go ahead. So um, I think it's just a case of finding a good balance between that. Um, mm. And so far yeah. I've been able to do it without, you know, incurring too much okay. financial loss through any mistakes that I've made. Mm -hmm. That's pretty amazing. And in terms of your product, like did you go through different... Um, designs different versions like how long did it take you to actually come up with the last prototype that's like okay this is the one you know oh uh, well i made a lot of prototypes at home at first and i am not a seamstress but they are not to win involved somewhere <laughs> these are really horribly sewn of pieces of undergarment um yeah and then i also uh worked with a lot of different fabric samples so before going into this i didn't mm -hmm. have a background in garment manufacturing at all so there was a steep learning curve um, and i never realized there was so much science in fabric it's it's yeah, yeah. mind-blowing still to this day yeah every time i talk to our fabric supplier i feel like it's been a like two-hour university course on on fabric because mm -hmm. there's just so much science that goes into how it feels, how it performs, how it yeah. reacts to water, whether it's you know pulling it in, uh, uh, pushing uh, it away, at absorption. Really, yeah. yeah, it's really quite incredible. So, mm. um, I completely lost my train of thought. What, what was the question yeah. again? <laughs> no, I got so excited about fabrics. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah so the, the number I, of. I was saying, oh, yeah, before we reached our final one. Oh, I mean, if you include all the final little tweaks, we would have had at least mm. 40 prototypes, if not more. Whoa. Um, just to get it right. Um, a lot of testing yeah. with you know, pouring water into things. And then, I mean, the tricky part with um, trying to product test period underwear, if you're wanting to do it realistically, you have to wait till every time your period has come. So <laughs> yeah. um, that would sometimes be a bit of a juggling act where, yeah. you know, I would have my period or one of my teammates would have their period, mm. find the product, mm. quickly update the prototype, and then we'd have to wait another 28 days for our periods yeah. to come again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It did, you know, that drew out the process longer than maybe other products. Um, mm. to, it's yeah. very it's very interesting. I, I'm always curious, like, about products and how they're created. Um like this one, is there like a million layers of fabric so that it absorbs all that quantity? Like, how does it work? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, there's not so much. It's just very sophisticated fabric. So okay. um, ours, our, our gusset is combined of you know, three components. Um, so the top layer is a really high tech, again, PFAS free fabric that works by drawing mm. the um, blood down um, and into yeah. the inner absorbent core um, and that is a really cool fabric that uh, it, it pulls in the blood or discharge and actually spreads it and holds it in so that you don't get any like wow. you know saturation yeah, yeah, yeah. in other parts that you don't and then the bottom part is um, still made out of organic cotton but also has a, a waterproof coating that prevents any leaks from going through um, mm. The inner core also has some silver um, treatment to it that makes it um, anti-odor and antimicrobial. Wow. Um, yeah. So yeah, it prevents bacteria growing. So it's yeah, it's pretty yeah. high tech. <laughs> I, I bet you took it took you a long time to figure all this out and to like, what kind of fabric do we need and all of those things. So that's pretty amazing. Um, Nina, I'm gonna ask you now three questions that I ask to all our guests. Um, are you ready for them? Go for it, yes. All right. How would your friends describe what you do for a living? Oh, <laughs> they would say uh, it's exciting and encourages them to get into tune with their own bodies. All right. That's pretty cool. Question number two, what is one thing that your product did to a client that you didn't expect? Um. I would say, again, it's that connection with self. So above and beyond acting as a good period project, just uh, encouraging our clients to listen to their body and tune into the different phases of their cycle, and then reap the you know, more confident and happier self as a result. So, yes. Yeah, that's, that's nice. Question number three, is there a book that changed your life that you would recommend to our audience? Yes, I would recommend my absolute favorite is Period Power by Maisie Hill. Um, Maisie is uh, an excellent, uh, she's got a strong online presence, but she is a hormone coach. I'm not sure if that's her official title, but her book, Period Power, mm. is absolutely phenomenal. She writes in such an easily digestible way where she breaks down the phases of the cycle and helps you understand why you feel like you do at certain times and how mm -hmm. you can adjust your lifestyle or your s schedule to kind of suit how you feel. And she writes in mm -hmm. such a brilliant way. For example, she um, compares estrogen to uh, the Beyonce of hormones and progesterone <laughs> oh as a Kristen Stewart. And it's like, it's brilliant. So, I mean, you laugh, you cry, it's just everything. Yeah. And you just really like feel that you know yourself better for having read that book. So, mm -hmm. yeah, Period Power mm -hmm. by Maisie Hill is my absolute yeah, all time yeah. recommended book, and it's it's and it's right on brand with your with yes. your product. <laughs> yes, I have a whole so, bookshelf full of period <laughs> books. <laughs> <laughs> so Nina, tell us where we can find your product and where do you ship them? In which countries? Yeah. So we ship globally um, from the US, and okay. you can buy us online at our website, which is www.freeperiod.com. So that's F R I period. Dot com. Yeah. All right. Amazing. Thank you, Nina, for being a guest on the podcast. And to all the listeners, I'll be back next week with a new episode.